Nintendo released the Game Boy in 1989, and it very quickly became the dominant player in the market, far eclipsing the handheld devices that came before it. But Bandai had a plan to compete, and all they'd need to do would be to borrow the father of the Game Boy. Bandai was founded in 1950 by Naharu Yamashina to manufacture toy cars and other models. It quickly became successful for its use of licensed anime characters. Its roots in the toy industry meant it was well placed to join the growing LCD game market and through that into home consoles. Bandai's original idea was to merge with Sega, creating Sega Bandai Limited. But a boardroom coup at the last minute scuppered those plans. So when Bandai decided to enter the handheld market, they turned to Gunpei Yokoi, the man who is credited as being the father of the Game Boy. Gunpei had left Nintendo in 1996 to found his own engineering firm, Koto Laboratory. Bandai approached him with their plan to challenge Nintendo, and work began on the Wonder Swan, so named because it would have the swan's elegance, and also because, well, it would be a technical wonder. Sadly, Gunpei died in 1997 and wouldn't see the release in 1999, but it made a splash with its relatively cheap launch price, a 30-hour battery life on a single AA, and a launch lineup of around 50 games. The Wonder Swan was available in nine colors and three limited edition two-tone cases. These were chosen via an online poll. Unfortunately, the monochrome Wonder Swan wasn't released to compete with the original Game Boy. Instead, it launched five months after the launch of the Game Boy Color. But Bandai was still confident it would sell well due to its lower price. However, the plan to launch in North America with the help of Mattel was cancelled, possibly due to an oversaturated market. Sales weren't spectacular, but were good enough for Bandai to invest in a color version, which they released in 2000. It would be compatible with the games from the monochrome machines, but of course also have its own color titles. Bandai's final version was the Swan Crystal. It had several technical improvements, mostly the much improved screen, but despite these improvements and a cheaper price, Bandai were not able to compete with Nintendo and the Wonder Swan was discontinued in 2003. Whilst not being as successful as Nintendo's machines, Bandai did reach a peak of 8% penetration in the handheld market. That might not sound like a lot, but it was certainly better than most of Nintendo's competitors ever managed. Right, well that's all that out of the way. <laughs> Let's take a look at the machines. And here we are with the devices. So this is the original monochrome wonder swan this here is the uh, a color this is in fact a, a fancy final fantasy branded one and this is a swan crystal which uh oh, it's upside down <laughs> they're all kind of going backwards because of this uh the, the one battery pack which they've all got because yeah despite the improvements in um screen displays and what have you they all ran on that very same philosophy of one aa battery to run them now the it did mean the battery life changed so if we look at the uh, the monochrome one here which is capable of eight shades of gray that had a battery life of some of them up to 40 hours that it was between 30 and 40 hours which is a pretty good run for a for a single battery machine and again you can see the one battery cover uh the color which uh was capable of displaying 241 colors from a palette of 4096 and up to 28 sprites per line had a battery life of about 20 hours and the swan crystal went all the way down to 15 hours the main difference in the swan crystal was the improved screen which meant it was less ghosting so still good time i mean 15 hours is still not bad play time and yeah just on that one battery again um they're interesting little machines they really are they I think they, they look really good. If we can compare them to uh, an original Game Boy, so the original Game Boy in here, and you can see they, they're a fair amount smaller in, in the dimensions and, and an awful lot thinner as well. If we hold the Swan Crystal, which is by far the biggest of the, of the machines, 
together next to that because it's far, far thinner than that original Game Boy. Uh, although, obviously, much closer to the Game Boy Color, which was a smaller machine. But yeah, they are interesting machines. Now, if you're looking for them in the market, uh, they're not too expensive. You can get them at relatively decent prices, apart from the Swan Crystal, which is the by far the rarest of them, it being the last of the models. Um, the colors are fairly good, and I, there's not really much point getting a monochrome one unless you're collecting. You can tell the difference on the screen because you see there's two buttons here on the monochrome, and there's three on the one small color because it has a uh, soft power button rather than the on off slider that the monochrome ones have. Now, one of the really interesting things about these machines, and uh, it's easier to show you rather than tell you, hence why we're doing it now and not during the actual information bits is you see they've got two sets of controls here and that's because you could also use them upright so there are a few games that run upright and you could use that as your just your controller down the bottom there which is it's an interesting little way of doing things um, it's not like the links which allowed you to swap left and right handed um, it's, it's kind of doesn't really work like that because you still only got this one set of action buttons here but it did allow you to use vertical games rather than just horizontal ones and some of them some games did take advantage of that yeah they are really nice i recommend getting the ones from color it's because it's just easy to obtain and cheaper if you can find a crystal for a decent price by all means it's, it is a, a much nicer screen on these they all these screens by the way are hard to see <laughs> except in a really good light there's no backlighting or anything on them so unless you're in really good light you won't see the screens that well um, but the, the Swan Crystal is by far the better of them in that regard um, the monochrome ones especially suffer from LCD burn so you'll probably find quite a lot of these that have got LCD burn you can fix it by replacing some of the, the foils inside and stuff but Honestly, uh, there's no need. The, you can get these for next to nothing. <laughs> uh, the game boxes, uh, literary boxes. So uh, there you go. That's a that's a Wonder Swan game, and that's a Wonder Swan color game. Uh, there's no real need for them to be massively different size. If you look at the actual cartridges, they are identical. Uh, obviously, because the color and the Swan Crystal were designed to be backwards compatible with the monochrome machine. Um, there tends to be quite a lot of stuff inside them, like um, lots of paraphernalia and plastic box and stuff that hold them in and things like that. So they, they're quite they're quite nice collectible cartridges, and I think they look really good as well. So the cartridges themselves come in these plastic boxes to look after them, and you can see they're kind of they're quite thin, uh, with like a, a small strip there as well. Um, if they're not in these boxes, they do. They are susceptible to getting dirty, so you would have to clean them if they're not in a box already. And you can see the color ones are exactly the same. Right. So, I mean, as always, <laughs> I guess I kind of answered the question that we normally answer at the end, which is, should you get one? And I would say absolutely yes. There are loads of exceptional games on here, including really good versions of things like Resident Evil and. Uh, Final Fantasy, although obviously a lot of these games are in Japanese, but you can you can generally get around them. Uh, just so many really good licenses, so many really good games. Uh, they really are worth getting, and they're fairly, like I said, they're fairly obtainable as long as you um, if you're going for the color, then definitely. I mean, yeah, the the monochromes are easy enough to get hold of, but again, if you get the color, you've got access to the whole license. So unless you're buying both of them, then I honestly wouldn't personally bother with the monochrome one. Um, and there's tons and tons of variations as well. I mean, if you're a collector and you like getting <laughs> complete collections, uh, the Wonder Swan is one of those machines that will drive you mad because there is just so many special editions and so many colours and two tone colours and what have you that, yeah, there's a lot to collect. Um, and they're just really nice looking machines that work really, really well and a really good design. So, yes, <laughs> we will... Um, Obviously, they're handheld machines. I've got no way of getting video out of them. I'm not sure. I think something did exist to get video out of them, but I don't own it. So what we'll do is we'll try to get one on and we'll put the camera right into the screen and, and see what we can get. Like I said, though, the screens on, on these machines are not backlit. They're not great. So we're going to have to play with light quite a lot to get a good enough picture. But we'll give it a shot. Back in a second. 
Right, so we are going to take a look on the Swan Crystal. Obviously, it has the best picture, uh, but let's put the battery in first. So obviously, we just need the one. So if we turn it over, you can see this is the battery compartment, and what happens is there's a little thing here which it says release. So we push that down, and then the battery compartment just slides out. And then we just put our battery in, and oops, the right way, and then we can just slide it back in again. There we go, and the battery is now in, <laughs> and that's it. Uh, there, are, there were devices in there for rechargeable batteries and stuff as well. You can get, um, honestly, <laughs> 50 hours battery life on, a, on an AA is, is not bad. Uh, the other cartridge goes in here with the contacts facing up at the bottom, so we can push that in. And then all it requires for us is to push the power button to turn it on. There we go. <laughs> right, so we will do our best to get the correct lighting yeah, you can't see that at all. <laughs> Let's get closer to see how bad it is.